Welcome to The Daily, presented by EA Sports FIFA 12 with Greg Lawless. I'm Jason Seguini. It's Thursday, September 29th. We're going to get to the action from last night, starting in Salt Lake, where the Chicago Fire came to town, trying to keep their playoff hopes alive, Greg, and they did so. They really did in fine form, too. A 3-0 victory over Salt Lake, Jason, at Rio Tinto, which is pretty amazing when you think about how good Real Salt Lake are at home. But this is the Marco Papa show. Three goals on the night, including one with his right foot, which I think surprised everyone, including the announcers on the game but ultimately this was a very complete performance by the Chicago Fire. It was helped out however Jason by the fact that Kyle Beckerman got a red card in the first half for a really silly play with a headbutt against Daniel Palladini. Not really sure where that came from. Maybe there is now after that 4-0 loss to DC last week and now this some real frustration starting to creep in at RSL. Yeah, and probably ended their hopes of chasing the LA yeah. Galaxy down for good the point. Supporters' Shield. But the good news, Javier Morales back on the field for the first time since that terrible injury in April. He got out there, played about 20-25 minutes, and looked pretty good while he was out there. We're going to move on. Kansas City took on Columbus at home with a chance to move into first place in the Eastern Conference last night. And they did it, Jason. 2-1 to one victory over the crew. It wasn't necessarily the prettiest thing because they got a goal from Kai Kamara from a penalty, although CJ Sapong did very well to, con to get that penalty called with a nice run into the box. And then the second goal, the winner in the second half, Matt Beasler with a long throw that Julius James is timing on his defensive clearance was horrible and it goes in off his head into the goal. This is a Columbus Crew team that is struggling right at the worst time as they're pushing toward the playoffs. They need to start getting some, some victories just to get some, some confidence back. Yeah, Columbus now 0-5-1 in their last six games. Mm -hmm. Not the time you want to be in a slide right now. Another big Eastern Conference matchup, though, happens tonight, and that's on ESPN2 at 8 p.m. Eastern time. D.C. United traveling to Philadelphia. Yeah, and this is a game that has a lot of ramifications in the playoff race in particular. If D.C. United can get the victory, they will jump into third place with one of those guaranteed spots, if you will, one of the, the seeded spots in the playoffs, not a wild card. If Philadelphia get it, they jump up into second place actually of, of in the Eastern Conference so big for both of these teams from a playoff standpoint a lot of people are going to be talking about Freddie Adu going back to play DC United for me that's old news it doesn't matter what matters here is Dwayne De Rosario for DC United he has become the man he's leading the league in goals he is leading this team in a charge into the playoffs can he do it against a Philadelphia team it's looked good right now four games unbeaten five games unbeaten at home so it's gonna be a tough match for everybody Again, that came 8 p.m. Eastern time on ESPN2. We're going to move on to the Champions League action from last night. And the LA Galaxy doing it in the dramatic. You look at the way that they won this game, very similar to how Morelia beat them down in Mexico. Yeah, exactly. It was a 91st minute goal from Juninho that got the win for them. A very important win, especially in the standings. I give a lot of credit to the back line, though, because Morelia was pressing in the second half when it was one-to-one -to, -one to go and get the win here. The back line bent, but they didn't break. And actually, Josh Saunders, although not great on the goal for Morelia, was fantastic down the stretch with some saves and either you know, causing some problems for shooters so they weren't able to get it done. He also got a little help from the woodwork, though. So the Galaxy stay alive, and Colorado had to play Metapon, had to win to stay alive, mm -hmm. and they are alive as well. And you know what? They took some heat going down with what looked like was going to be a reserve team. Head coach Gary Smith didn't even make it go down for this trip, but it didn't matter. When you have a guy like Omar Cummings on, that's not a reserve team. You know, he gets on the score sheet. They get a 3-1 to one victory. Field wasn't great. It didn't matter. They played very well, I thought, to get this re result on the road. They're definitely alive and have a good chance, I think, of advancing now. Speaking of fields that weren't great, FC Dallas down in Panama yeah. to take on Toro <laughs> in the rain. They end up dropping the game 5-3. to three. The result in this game didn't matter so much to Dallas. Maybe it matters to MLS as a whole. Yeah, I think it does because ultimately they get this loss. It was a crazy game. Eight goals, three red cards, two penalties for Dallas. Ruben Luna, the young kid, getting two goals for Dallas. So that's great. But you're right about what this means for MLS. Because of this loss, now both MLS teams in that group cannot advance. Toronto play against Dallas at Pizza Hut Park on the final day of group play. If they get a victory, they're through and Dallas are out. If Dallas get a win or a draw, they're through and Toronto are out. If Dallas had won this game down in Panama, though, they both would have had a chance to get through. Now that can't happen. Still would have been unlikely, but if you looked at this tournament after the last match day and you said that going into the final uh, match day, all the MLS teams would still be alive yeah, yeah. and four of them could advance, yep. I think you would take that, Greg, at Definitely. this point, right? We'll have plenty to talk about, including all of this Champions League, all the action from last night and on the weekend. 
on Extra Time Radio later. You can get it on iTunes or Buzzsprout this afternoon. And Greg, also starting yesterday, the Super Tuesday campaigning. Yes, it did. So uh, time to start uh, getting your ballots ready for, for next Tuesday's action. We're having a lot of fun here on MLSsoccer.com discussing the two marquee matchups next Tuesday. L.A. at New York at Red Bull Arena, the marquee matchups, all the DPs, the big names, Beckham, Donovan, Henri, Marquez, all of that. And, of course, the U.S. Open Cup final, Seattle hosting the Chicago Fire with, with that on the line as well. All right, that's all we have for the Daily. Today we'll be back with much more tomorrow.